becomes 23. It's a very common, uh, it's a known and, and a common sum. And I will be drawing lessons from the life of Daniel, uh, just as God has been ministering to me. So we begin with Psalms 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in, in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So as we begin in that bit of scripture, that indeed Jesus confirming this scripture said, I am the good shepherd. And the shepherd, he lays down his life for the sheep. And um, Jesus uh, confirming that I lay down my life, no one takes it from me, I lay it down. And so David is saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why? Because he makes me beside still waters. And I stumbled up upon a teaching on this psalm that really challenged my thinking, and I would like to share that with you, that every time when we read this psalm, we imagine very uh, rush, uh, green grass. Like we imagine like Kericho, when you're in Kericho, when you're in tea, tea plantation, and it is all green, and it is all beautiful. And you imagine a uh, uh, a, a crystal water, you know, very nice. And, and you imagine this is what David is saying. And that teacher was teaching differently. And I agree with him. And that's why I'm sharing with you that David, when he's saying the Lord is my shepherd, he is not referring to the spiritual green scenery that we know. But rather, because Israel is much more like our, our northern part of the country. It's much more like Garissa and Wajir. It's a desert. So he's referring to those green shrubs, those green shrubs that you know that are found here and there. The entire place is dusty. Uh, there is no pasture, but there is here and there. And so that... David is saying, you know, God, his blessings to us, he will lead us. He will lead us to where we will find our shrub. He will lead us to where we will find the need that we have, the moment that need presents itself. And I believe we have experienced this with God, that he comes in amazing ways. He comes in ways that we do not understand. And he meets our needs, not in ways that we think he will meet our needs. He meets our needs in different ways so that we honor him and glorify him. And... Um, Right now, what is coming to my mind is the Assyrian general who had leprosy and who had that there is, you know, a prophet in Israel who would cure him of leprosy. And so what happened is that uh, he went to his king and his king wrote to, his, to the king of Israel, heal my general. And when the king of Israel received that letter, he tore his clothes, like, how can you ask me to heal him of reflux? You know, it's an incurable disease. And when, when Elisha had, he sent the, the general and he told him deep in River Jordan seven times. And the guy was so agitated. How can you ask me to dip myself in a dirty river like Jordan? Don't we have better? rivers from where I come from. And because he thought, if I get this letter to the king and the king writes to the king and the prophet will just come and say, you know, a few words and the, and the leprosy would be gone. But that is not how God presented the need that this general had. And sometimes we miss God because 
there is what we there is the problem that we have and there is the the solution as we have figured it in our mind and um the solution as we have figured it in our mind we go to god we go to god with our problem we go to god with our solution but you know his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts and so many times we miss him because we don't take the instructions that he gives us to meet our problem because we already go with a fixed mindset with a form of expectation and so many times we miss god many times we miss god you know as as i was reading this um if david said says he is the shepherd if the lord is the shepherd that makes us the sheep and if that makes us the sheep then we know the nature of sheep how meek sheep can be and you know god was ministering to me that sheep rarely stray they rarely stray and especially when the shepherd is on site when the shepherd is on site they rarely stray maybe in the absence of the shepherd they might stray but they rarely stray but that is not so about the, that is not the nature of a goat a goat strays even in the presence of the shepherd in fact shepherds have a much harder time with a goat than with a sheep and when the goat is straying it is straying to find what it believes to be better pasture than what the shepherd has provided now we repeat that that when a goat strays it strays because it is believed it is going after better pasture than the shepherd has provided and i wonder how many times we stray how many times we go looking for what we believe is better than what the shepherd has provided and yet he is a good shepherd praise the lord and so we look at the life of daniel and we see daniel coming um to babylon as as a prisoner of war and we see god separating daniel together with shadrach meshach and abednego so that they are in the service of the king and um and so the the, the they are put under the service for the service of the king as wise men and we see the first thing that daniel does is that he separate himself from the rest and this is also key because the shepherd when the shepherd takes us he's taking us where he knows is best for us and so when daniel finds himself in the company of the gentiles and he knows that the ways of his god are not the ways of the gentiles the first thing that daniel does is to separate himself by separating his diet so daniel separates himself he separates his diet he says i am not going after this lush meat a uh, very nice wine and whatever rare delicacy is placed on him i will stick on vegetables because i know my father has commanded me i shall not take food that has been sacrificed to idols and so we see the difference between between you know daniel is saying you know this thing that the world has given me when it is contrary to what the shepherd has offered i am not going after the world i am not going to do as the world do i am going to do what i have been instructed and that is why in uh, verse 3 of psalms it says he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake that the lord leads us in the paths of righteousness and so as long as we stay with the lord as long as we don't stray as long as we don't go looking for ourselves solutions and we, we trust the lord to provide whatever we need for the moment that we need it and for the season that we need it we stay guided by the word of god 
That is the path of righteousness. The path of righteousness is to stay guided by what God is saying. And we see Daniel, he takes that. He decides, I'm going to stick to the path of righteousness. I know the word says, and I'm not going to do contrary to what the word says. So the psalmist say in, in, four, in, in, in verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now I'm looking at this shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ, and in his hands he has two things. In one hand he has a rod, and in one hand he has a staff. And that should be enough to comfort us as his children. Because the staff will guide us. It will guide us. It keeps us in that path of righteousness. It guides us. When, when, we are, when our nature is truly that of a sheep, when we try to stray, our Lord is able to, to guide us. He's able to bring us back. And he has the road to smite him the enemy. And that should be, sec should, it should give us security. And that is why uh, David is saying, though I walk through the, through the valley of the shadow of death, yes, I am in that situation, but I see two things. I see you are wrong, and I see you are staff, and in that I'm comforted. Praise the Lord. I see you are wrong, I see you are staff, and in that, I am comforted. And Daniel is one person who was, who had gone through the valley of, 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 of death several in the book of Daniel. The first one was when the king was so agitated by a dream. And uh, he, he called for his wise men and he said to them, you know, I'm paraphrasing. You have been taking me for a fool. You have been lying to me. You have been interpreting things that are lies. So this time, I'm not even going to tell you the dream. You go figure out the dream and bring me an interpretation. Otherwise, you are all dead. And of course, they couldn't. They said, what you ask of us, only a God can do, not human beings. And so the king ordered for their death. And Daniel, um, already been in the service of the king as a wise person, he was among them to, to be killed. And he had what the king had demanded. And Daniel knew a shepherd who holds with him a rod and, and a staff. And he went to God and he inquired of God. And God reveals to Daniel the dream. And he came back to the king with the dream and with the interpretation. You know, if Daniel had responded the same way the other ones had responded, that this is impossible. This can't be done. This is impossible and this can't be done. But Daniel knew there is a God who can do it. And it reminds me of, 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 of Joshua and, and Caleb when the, when the 12 spies went and the report they brought was, this is impossible, it is beyond us. But Joshua and Caleb knew of a God who is able to do the impossible. And so I don't know what the valley of the shadow of death in your life translates into. I don't know what it translates into, but be comforted because there is the Lord who holds the staff and there is the Lord who holds the road. And that means the enemy cannot reach you. And that means when you trust God with whatever it is, you cannot go wrong because his staff will guide you. Praise the Lord. Uh, then it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And I don't know how naive I will sound, but at my age, is this is the time I am coming to terms with the fact that in life I will have enemies. I have really fought that. I, I have really fought that. It, this is the time that I'm realizing in life there will be enemies. 
Maybe because my mother never told me that. Maybe because my Sunday school teacher never told me that. But one thing I have come to know, if you decide to take the path of righteousness, you will have enemies. That's why scripture tells us to pray for our enemies, to pray for them that persecute us and not to cast them. Because if you don't have enemies, something is off. You know, Jesus said, um, you know, you call me master. And uh, this is what they did to me, whom you call master. They said by, uh, by Bel, Zabab, I cast out demons. They said, I'm a lunatic. They said, I'm a glutton. They said so many things to Jesus, how much more to you. And so if they persecuted your Lord, you should expect that there will be persecution in your life as a believer. If there is no persecution in your life, something is off. You know, I, I, I usually say the devil is not interested in someone who is not roughing his feather, not bothering his kingdom. So if, you are, if, 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 if your football is going the same direction as the devil, there will be no opposition. But if you are scoring for the opposite team, you're going to have a name. And so the psalmist says that you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint me with oil. You know, when, when Daniel went to, to, to the service of the king as an exile and he rose through ranks and he rose through ranks to the point that it made some people uncomfortable and so they decided we need to get rid of this guy um, we need to get rid of this guy that saw Daniel thrown in the, in the lion's den. We know the story. And the following morning, Daniel was as sound as he was when he entered the den. Because there's a God in heaven. And when Daniel came out of that den, at that point he was, in charge of a province. He was simply a minister. After the then incident, Daniel became in charge of those in charge of provinces. He became the prime minister. So those who sought his death, God raised a standard for Daniel. And so when the psalmist is saying, you prepare a table for me, in the presence of my enemy, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. There's no better example than that of Daniel. No better example than that of our Lord Jesus Christ, that after the cross, he was glorified. After the cross, there is glory. And so whatever our valley represents, Whatever our valley represents, if we walk through because we choose the path of righteousness, there will be glory. The Lord will anoint our head and our cup will overflow in Jesus' name. And finally, as the psalmist says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Father. And I see Daniel after serving, I believe, under three kings, rising to be such a senior person in exile. When, because he knew the word of God, when he perceived that there are 70 year, uh, years of exile that had been prophesied by Jeremiah, when he perceived that they were over, I see Daniel seeking the face of God. I see Daniel telling God, you know, our 70 years are over. Lord, return us to Jerusalem. 
And so this is my prayer, that even as God exalts us, even as God uh, uh, lays a table for us, even as he anoints our head, even as he makes our cup overflow, may we not forget Jerusalem. Let our hearts be steadfast in seeking him and let our joy be always found to be in his presence, to be in his presence. And praise God, praise God that now I don't have to go to the temple to, to feel the presence of God. Praise God that now I am the temple and he indwells me and that I can pass his presence when I truly seek him. And this is my prayer for you and me, that as the Lord exalts us, as the Lord blesses us, may we be deeply rooted in his love, in his service, and in his truth. So that is what God has been ministering to me, and I pray that it has blessed you. Um, I will request us to believe and pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word, that indeed you are our shepherd, and you take us where the grass is green, O oh Lord. You know where uh, our solution to every need that we have in our life, Father. We pray, open our ears, be inclined to your voice, that we may hear you as you lead us. We thank you, Lord that you comfort us with your, with your staff, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you smitten our enemies with your road. And we thank you, Jesus, because your desire is to bless us and to bless us abundantly. Father, our prayer is may we remain in your presence. May we remain in your truth. May we make the choices that Daniel made to remain in you and to seek you even as you showed yourself faithful to him. Lord, we know you're showing yourself faithful in our lives. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the honor. For we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.